Hi Dancers, it's Katherine Morgan and today on Suffolk's channel we are going to be talking about one of the most frequently asked questions for Suffolk, for me, and that is how do I properly sew my point shoes? You don't know quite where to put the ribbons, you don't know quite where to put the elastic, you're a little bit confused. So I actually need to sew a new pair of shoes, so I'm going to take you through my entire process. This is the system that Suffolk likes to use. I'm going to show you exactly how to put the ribbons in the right place for you and the elastic in the right place for you, and also how to sew up the side if you need a little bit less fabric on the side. I'm going to show you a really, really cool trick from Carrie Suffolk so you don't have big old lines on the side of your shoes. It's a really pretty way to sew up that extra fabric. So I'm going to take you through the whole process. Very simple. You don't need to be scared or overwhelmed to sew your point shoes. Um, it's not that hard once you get the hang of it. And dancers, I highly encourage you to start doing it young. Don't depend on your mom to sew your point shoes. It's kind of a rite of passage and once you get a little bit older, you need to be able to sew your own shoes. You're obviously going to need your elastic. This is the regular one inch elastic that Suffolk makes, but stay tuned because we are also coming out with a mesh invisible elastic. You know that kind of, it blends into your tights, you can't really see it. It's not quite out yet, but when it is, I will link it in the box below if when it's available. So either the mesh or the normal elastic. So you also have your choice of ribbon, whatever you like to use, either the stretch or the normal satin, you know, regular ribbon. Either one, this process works for both kinds of elastic and both kinds of ribbon. I'll link all of these things in the box below to make it easy for you guys to find. So here we go, how to sew a point shoe. Okay you guys, so we're gonna start with the elastic and I am just using that one inch normal elastic from Suffolk. I would probably actually prefer to use the mesh invisible elastic, but it's not out yet. So I will switch to that when it comes out, but this is great, it's got a lot of give to it. And for me, I've always found that it works best in terms of where to put the elastic. Probably about, I don't know, half an inch to a quarter an inch, quarter inch away from the center line. I found the further out you put it, it just starts to pull in really weird places and it's not the best. You want that heel to stay on, you want it right there, like I've done with this one. I've already done one side. And a trick for those of you who have problems with those heels staying on, sew it further down. I've almost sewed this all the way down. I could probably have gone a little bit farther. That way you're getting the full pull here instead of just from the top, like a normal elastic you just pull from here. You're getting the full panel pull of the heel to stay on. And since I've started sewing my elastics like this, a little further down, I haven't had any heel trouble. So like I said, I've already done one side. I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's very, very simple. Just make sure when you sew, you don't twist it and you put it on backwards or, or, or weird. You want both same sides to be sewn to that shoe. Make sure we're not twisting it. So like I said, I've done one side. I'm gonna use the Suffolk sewing tube linked in the box below. This is very, very simple and I have actually included some diagrams for you guys in the box below if you need help with some sewing. It's just some little picture references you can use um, to help you on your way. So like I've done on this side, I've done a quick stitch up here and then a whip stitch, it's called all the way around just for security. So I'm gonna actually put this one a little farther down as to where I would sew it, about here. Again, very close to the center line because I want that heel pull there instead of pulling on the outside. So I'm actually gonna start this. Threaded my needle, tied the knot. What you do is you put it in the bottom, down and around and up back through the top to start it and pull it through. Now, I know you're probably worried that I'm sewing the drawstring, but I'm not. And if at any point you think you are sewing the drawstring, just give the drawstring a little pull. If it moves, you're good. So down and around and up through the back. Might catch that elastic a little bit. Down and around and through. And the way I'm doing this going down and up, again, I'm avoiding that drawstring. It's only if you stick it through the middle that you're gonna get the drawstring. So I'm just gonna do this all the way across. Okay, now you could stop there. You could absolutely stop there. If you want to, you can cut it right there. If you need a quick and easy job, that's actually probably enough, but I just like the extra security, so I don't have to worry about it. So now we're gonna whip stitch 
all the way around. So what a whip stitch is, you go in the back and then through the elastic and up. Very simple. Down and up. And be careful, I'm not actually going through the satin. I'm only going through that canvas layer. I've got my finger under here so I can feel if I'm hitting, going all the way through the shoe or not, which I'm not. Just down and around. This is called whip stitch. I'm going to do it all the way around. So there's the last stitch. So now I'm just going to secure it. So again, below the drawstring, stick the needle all the way through to the other side of the point shoe, like so. And then just go back through. See how this little stitch is like this? This is a machine made, but we're gonna mimic this pattern. So just through, back and forth, just for extra security if you're really worried about it or you want to make sure that elastic holds just a little back and forth mo motion under the drawstring, not through it. And now, I'll just flip it for you. All I'm gonna do is knot it. So that's the elastic. Again, I'm gonna get a nice pull from down here instead of just up here. It's very secure because I've whip stitched it, I did the top, and so that elastic should not be going anywhere. Okay, so now onto the ribbon. Again, I've done one side, I'm gonna show you the other. I like to sew my ribbons in one piece. This is just a preference. Um, either way, this is gonna work. You can always cut it right here. But I'm gonna show you how to measure your ribbon so it works on your foot the best and it looks the best and you know exactly where to put it. So I have one ribbon and this is for one foot. So what you're gonna do is take the ribbon and cross it underneath your arch and tie it as you would a point shoe. Now the whole point of this ribbon and this cross on your ankle is to draw tension to your arch. So you want it to hit the highest point. So for me, that's right about here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is take my shoe, put it on, and take a marker, as I did with this one, and mark exactly where I want that ribbon to hit. So again, for me, it's right about here. I'm gonna take the inside of the shoe and mark right here, right here, right here, and right here, just like on this shoe. So right here I have the marks for the, for the ribbons. This is my left foot. I've already done one side. So now I'm going to show you how I sew the other side. Again, you can cut it and do two separate ribbons if you like, but I like doing the one solid ribbon because let's say this ribbon accidentally comes unsewn. Look what happens. You still are gonna have it tied. It's still gonna be tight. It's not gonna come undone and fall off or whatnot. So I like sewing my ribbons in one long piece, but again, that's entirely up to you. So very similar to how we did the elastic. We're gonna mark follow our marks, and I wouldn't make this too tight. I would probably give it a little bit of slack. So put it right here, we're gonna start exactly like we did with this one, with this down and around and up stitch, so we avoid that drawstring. Now once you get to here, like we did with the elastic, I would do the little whip stitch. So back to front. Now, if you're also cutting it and having it be a single piece, do the same thing as you did here, secure it all the way around. But since I'm, I'm doing one piece, all I'm gonna do is the last part, which is that back to front thing. So I'm gonna go down through the shoe to secure it. Back through, again, avoiding that drawstring. And then I'm gonna do one last on this side, I'm trying to show you, hopefully you can see. One last little back to front whip stitch. Back to front, maybe two of them. And then a great way to loop it, let me show you, is you put it through like you're gonna do a stitch, but then take the loop, stick your needle through the loop, and pull. That's my favorite and easiest way all right, so the last step is totally optional. Those of you who need to cut down this extra fabric, it's too much and you wanna show off your arch a little bit more, like myself, there's a way to do this without seeing a bunch of thread. I've done it on this shoe already. You might be able to see this line here, but from two feet away, you cannot tell and there's not a bunch of stitches 
on the outside. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And all it does really is just cut down that extra fabric for me. I don't need a lot on the side. This shoe typically comes up to here on me and just hides my foot. So I just like to cut it down. And if I was getting a custom done, I would have them do that in the factory. And Carrie Suffolk, the genius Carrie Suffolk of Suffolk, is the one that taught me how to do this. I'm going to show you on the other shoe. I do it on both sides. And this is important, again, to remember that there are two layers to this point shoe. There's the outer satin layer and the inner canvas layer. And we are going to sew through just the satin layer. This really only works with getting this one layer, but don't worry about that. I'll show you how. For you guys, you, what you might want to do, see, look, it's just so big on me. I'm going to probably sew this much down. I know where that line is going to be. I don't need to mark it, but you could always, you know, take a little pencil and give yourself an outline and follow that line. Um, but I'm going to do it without marking it. So I'm going to just start. See, I can even see it sitting here, what I want to do with it. Just sew it down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is start towards the heel. And I'm going to put, this is the one time you put your thread all the way through. You're going to start it from the inside of the shoe somewhere, pick a place, and just start there. So you're going to make a stitch. Again, not going through that canvas layer. Put your finger behind it. Take a little stitch next to it. And just through the satin layer, stick the needle through like so, and pull. Okay? Back to the other side. Stick your needle through like that. Again, only through the satin. And pull. And we're going to go along this line. Now, the, the further apart you make your stitches, the more the fabric is going to pull together. So if you only want a little bit, make these closer together. So I would make it here instead of about here. But I need a lot of fabric taken off the sides, so I'm going to pull it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. It really doesn't matter. I just am not a fan of that whip stitch look threading on the outside of your shoe. So again, just going through that satin layer. And actually, dancers, I find this easier to do before you sew on your elastic. This is the first step that I do to my shoes before I sew ribbons and elastic. Um, just find it easier to navigate without elastic. Also with this, make sure you don't double your thread. You need a single strand of thread thing. All right, here's where the magic happens. What you're going to do is you're going to pull this thread Pull, pull, pull. Don't be afraid to really pull it. You can push, pull hard. I have to turn it around. Pull it hard. Look, it folds in on itself. Is that not cool? I thought that was so cool. Um, and again, then you're not going to have all those stitches on the outside of your foot. It's just going to look like a seam, which from probably two feet away, you're not going to be able to tell. And don't be afraid to really pull this thread so you get that good line. So now to finish this off, I'm going to push it back through the shoe. I want to knot it on the inside. Hard to tell with the ribbons. And I'm just going to knot that thread. And that's it. I probably would have done a better job had I not done with ribbons elastic. It would have turned out a little bit better like this one. <laughs> but so I recommend if you're going to do this, do this first. But now you stick your shoe on and it's just a better line for me. See, I don't need the, the shoe coming all the way up my foot. Yeah, I'd like it to come down a little bit. Um, I probably could have even started a little further back like I did with this one, but the elastic's in the way. So that's why I recommend you start before the elastics. Let's do it one more time so you can see. Start this one a little further up. So this is the one time the thread goes all the way through. Now you're going to make your little stitch through the satin. All right, so now I've got my, my line. We pull. Oh, that side was better. See, look at that. And now you have a seam. It does not change the size of your shoe. It just cuts down the sides without having the big old stitch on the side. And so there it is. And that's how you can cut down the sides of your shoe without having it be a big mess. So guys, that's it. Super easy. How to sew 
obviously everybody's ribbons are going to be in a different place. Everybody's elastic is going to be in a different place. And hopefully if you get the hang of that little trick on that outside fabric so you don't have that kind of whip stitch look on the outside of your shoe. Play around with this. It's not going to be perfect the first time. It took me a long time to figure out exactly how I like to sew my shoes. And also dancers, remember when you're dancing, if you feel you need a little bit of tug here and there, you can adjust your next pair. Adjust the ribbons, adjust the elastics. It's not set in stone. So it's really trial and error. Play around what works for you but this is the easiest system that I can find. Also, I have those guides in the box below if you wanna print those out to practice your sewing. Really, really helpful. Suffolk has made those graphics for you guys, so they are also in the box below. If you missed the video on our new ballet shoe, it's right down there, you can click it to watch. Love you guys so much, and I will see you next week.